Hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. I have a project today uh, that I think you are really going to enjoy. Now what we're going to be putting together today is a very simple uh, power cart uh, using a garden cart uh, that can be used for like a gas generator to power all kinds of equipment and tools around your place, around your homestead, or use an emergency backup system for your house in the event the grid goes down. All right, so, and we're gonna put this together with very basic parts, and this is a system that anyone can put together. I don't care if you got any electrical experience at all, you can put this, this system together in about an hour. Now this system here is what I'm going to be using for doing work around my place. I'm going to be working on my Vardo camper you can see back here. I'm going to be running power tools and things like that. But other, other items that you can run on power off of this, you can see I've got my Aerial X52 volt uh, electric bike over there. I can recharge that from this. I can run my uh, electric tiller down there. I can run, I can repower and charge my electric mower right there. I can run my electric chainsaw, my skill saw, my jigsaw. All of my electric tools will run off of this. This will even run a microwave inside your house. It will run an air conditioner, one of the smaller window units, like a 500 watt unit, it will run off of this. Now the equipment that I'm gonna be using is also very affordable, and I'm going to put the links to the equipment that I recommend in the information below the video. However, if you wanna use different equipment, if you wanna use a different cart, if you wanna use different batteries or inverters, you're welcome to do that. Now a little bit on this cart. This is made by Built Hard, that's B-I-L-T, Hard, and it is a, this is rated for 880 pounds, okay? Very good and very affordable on Amazon, and the sides on this fold down, you can use it for a flatbed. The sides actually come off if you want to. I'm using it enclosed like this because I've got my battery and stuff in it, and I will be building a plywood top to go on this. I haven't done that yet, but I will get to that. But I like this because it will hold a big battery like this. I'm using a 300 amp hour battery and still leaves me room, all this room back here that I can put my power tools, my extension cord and everything else in there and put my inverter down in here when it's not in use. It has a handle, it can be moved and, and, and it's easy to portable around. It also has no, uh, no puncture tires on this cart. So, you know, this is a cart that I would recommend for this project, but if you have a different cart or already have one, you could use that. All right, so let, let me show you what I got here. Okay, folks, so the components that I'm going to be using for this power cart, I'm going to be using an inverter, an LFP, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Like I said, you can use different components, and the cart. And I've got a 30-watt uh, solar panel, which I'll show you down here. You can use different components, is what I want to impress on you. So you don't have to use the components that I'm using, but this is what I recommend for a, a garden cart to be used around your property or to run small appliances in your house. Now, I've already explained the garden cart here. What I've got here is a power drive, 1,000-watt, a uh, pure sine wave inverter. And I want to impress on you, you want to get a pure sine wave inverter for running any type of power tools or stuff like that. They won't work off a modified sine wave inverter. So you want to get a power inverter. I do recommend that you get one that has enough watts that it will run whatever tools you're going to run. All of my tools will run under, on, on under a thousand watts. You may want to get a 1500 watt or a 2000 watt inverter depending on the size of your tools. Now this one has two AC plugs it also has a USB-A and a USB-C plug on it, and it has an LED readout, which I like. That tells me the charge level in the battery, so I know if my battery is getting low, okay? The inverter converts DC power from the battery, okay, to AC power uh, to run all of the AC different tools. If you're running something that is running direct DC, you can also get a DC plug uh, extension cord and run direct DC appliances off this battery. Now I'll show you the battery. This is a uh, LifePo 4 battery, lithium iron phosphate battery. They are considered very safe. They're pretty much what most off-gridders are now using for their systems because they have very high capacity. They hold a lot of power. Uh, they're also sealed. Uh, there's no maintenance to do on these. All you got to do is put them in place and attach them to, to your inverter and you're ready to go. Uh, now this one is at 300 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. This one's made by Lithova. Uh, I've got several other brands. I also like Amper Time, LA Time, and Enjoy Bot for batteries. I use all of them. This one's a 300 uh, amp hour battery, and it is 3,840 watt hours. You can see that there. 3,840 watt hours. Now, to put that into perspective, 3,840 watt hours means that, means that this battery will run a 100 watt load for about 30 hours continuous. Okay, so that's how you can get, kind of determine. Now, if you want to use a smaller battery, you could use a 100 amp hour battery, a 200 amp hour battery, or you can get one like this, a 300 amp hour battery, 
or you could put multiple batteries in here. You can see that there's enough room in here. If I wanted to, I could actually probably put uh, two more batteries in here. If you've got uh, 200 amp hours, you could probably put four, four of these batteries in here if you wanted to. Again, this cart is rated for 880 pounds, so it will handle that weight. One battery, though, like this, that's more power than I will use probably in a month of running my tools and everything that I use all the time around my place. Now, a real simple connection on this. This just has two cords in the back of it, as you can see here. Okay, so here you can see the battery, and you can see the connections. Now, these are the uh, solar panel connections, and as you can see, there's just a black and a red connection uh, with battery clamps on them. If you want, you can do a permanent setup, but I like this because this way I can remove the solar panel because I don't need the solar panel when I'm working with the car. I'm going to be hauling this around my property wherever I'm working. I only need the solar uh, panel connected when I'm charging up the battery on days that I'm not using the power car. All right, so the battery clamps work really well for this system here. And then the inverter just has two cables. As I said, it has a red and black cable that you can see here, positive and negative, and that just goes to the positive or the positive and negative on your battery. All right, as long as you don't mix those up, you really can't do anything wrong on this system. Make sure that these connections are really tight on both the inverter and the battery, and that's really all there is to connecting up an inverter like this to a battery to create your power card. This inverter has built-in fuses, so if something blows, I can unscrew this and change the fuses out. Very unlikely that's going to happen, but it does happen. This inverter does have a uh, fan in it to cool it down, so the fan will come on occasionally when you're running it. And like I said, this has an LED readout, and if I turn this on right now, and I just turn this on, and it says that I've got uh, 13... My, the, my charge uh, level is at 13 volts in this battery, so it's not completely filled up, all right? But it is charging, and that's the next thing that you want to consider. There's a couple of different ways you can charge this up. You can charge this from an AC charger, or you can charge this up from solar. Now, I'm charging it up from solar right now using just a 30-watt solar panel. Okay, so I'm using for this entire system, I'm only using a 30 watt solar panel with a very small PWM controller. Now some people will say, why aren't you using a much larger solar panel? You can if you want, but I want you to consider that this unit is only going to be used maybe once a week at my place. And so a 30 watt solar panel will recharge this uh, over uh, you know, three or four days. It'll probably have five days between uses. 30 watt panel will recharge this battery uh, from whatever I use in it generally in a day. So I don't need a big panel and I like these smaller panels. You can get these again off, off Amazon. This one has a, a brace attached to it and it, it's real easy to connect. It just has, and it's real easy to connect. It's portable so I can just put it in the cart if I want to and it has a positive and you can see these have been outside. It has a positive uh, battery connection just like you use for a jump charger on your truck and a negative connection and all you need to do is connect those to the battery when you want to charge it up. Positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative and then it has a small controller down here. And this is the controller that comes with these kits like this. If you're using a different panel, a larger panel, you will need to get a controller. I would recommend an MPPT power controller. That's maximum power point tracking. They will get you a little bit more power out of your panels, up to 15%, so I would recommend that. But this one just comes with a PWM controller, works fine. And right now it says it is charging up. It's flashing red down there. So it's charging up from the sun and is recharging the batteries. So that's as simple and easy as it is to set up this garden cart. Now I'll show you how this works with different tools just so you know I'm telling you the truth that it will run all these different tools. So here's my jigsaw which I use all the time running off this inverter. And you can see why I like this power cart because as I'm working I can just put my tools inside here and I can take them along wherever I'm going. This is my Ryobi skill saw. And I get a lot of use out of this during the during the week when I'm working on projects and stuff like that. Okay, and this is my uh, Pullen uh, 3.5 horsepower electric chainsaw. And I'm going to be getting some use out of this this week because I got some tree limbs I need to, to trim down here. And this one's fine off of this too. Okay, and here's my electric tiller. Uh, cultivator, and I'm going to use this a couple times this spring to get my garden ready. Then I've also got my electric mower. I won't show you that working because it's got its own battery in it, but I can charge that battery up from this system sitting outside without having to plug it into the house. And my e-bike. 
uh, which I ride practically every day during the summer. 52 volt Ariel X e-bike, uh, charges up in about five hours off of the battery and, and uh, battery using its own controller. It also has its own battery in it, so then I can ride it for a week uh, after it's charged up. All right, folks, again, you need your garden cart, you need your power inverter. Uh, the power inverter should be at least a thousand watts and it should be a pure sign inverter. And you need a solar panel with a controller on it to recharge your battery. That's it, that's all you need. And it's just two connections and you got your power cart that will run everything that a gas generator will run for your yard work and stuff like that, or to be used as an emergency backup power system for your house, your cabin, your recreation cabin, something like that. All right, folks, go look at that equipment. Again, the links for what I recommend is all in the information below the video. Have a great day, folks, and I'm looking forward to a beautiful spring.